such a beautiful night and it's really quite magical in here. I'm one of 200 people in the world certified to ban hummingbirds. Like where else can you get waterfront property for 19 bucks a night? Hi, I'm Dagmar Timmer and you're watching The Sustainable Region. Today we're in the great outdoors exploring some of the unique programs at Metro Vancouver's regional parks. First up, a relatively new offering at Pacific Spirit, an event where nature provided the perfect backdrop for a forest symphony. On a summer's night at Pacific Spirit Regional Park, something unusual is taking place. Where normally there is only the sound of hikers' footsteps and birdsong, tonight there is music. Tonight, the musicians will spread themselves out all along this trail in Pacific Spirit. And when the public comes to, to Forest Symphony tonight, they'll be able to stop along the trail, listen to the musician, a little part of their song, and then move along to the next musician whenever they're ready. It's the second time Metro Vancouver has put on this event, and the turnout is impressive. By night's end, some 2,700 people will have taken in the music along this two-kilometer trail. I think it's really great. It's such a beautiful night, and it's really quite magical in here. There's a stretch on the trail where the trees are so tall and it looks almost like a cathedral. When you stand there, you can almost picture the music of a church uh, th filling this, this space. And so it, it lends very easily to have some nice music to fill the air. It's fabulous. I love the atmosphere. It's, uh, and brings together a couple of our favorite things, music and woods and the, the peace of being with friends. And yeah, it's, it's great. The musicians along the trail are all volunteers with varying levels of musical experience. We have a huge range of musicians. Students, they're just getting started in their lives as musicians, or if they're just uh, part-time, uh, they, they do it for fun, um, and people who do it as a profession. So we have the whole gamut that's coming out tonight. And those musicians seem to be enjoying it just as much as their audience. It's a wonderful atmosphere. It's um, surprisingly wonderful acoustics, the way the music plays with the sound of the air and the birds and the leaves. I will definitely play in the woods many, many more times. Normally we don't get to play in the forest. It's like my first time being into like this kind of experience. Reviews are in, and it's two thumbs up all around. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. I love to hear music actually in an unusual atmosphere, not in a concert hall. It just really touches you more. In some cases, members of the audience become part of the show. It would be nice to have everybody dress up, like be more aware, take part, not just being passive to come and look and listen, but also to, uh, to participate, you know, more interactive, where people can dress up. You can also use some of the invasive species, you know, like a morning glory, you know, get rid of them and then also decorate yourself with. Like it in here? Yes! <laughs> okay, okay, I thought it was pretty bad. <laughs> it's a great way to spend an evening with the family in the forest, and the music's beautiful.
Welcome back to the Sustainable Region. Hummingbirds are one of nature's most endearing creatures. But I'll bet you didn't know that despite their tiny size, hummingbirds can be banded for research purposes. Catching a glimpse of a hummingbird at a backyard feeder is a moment of rare beauty. Equally unique, a chance to learn about hummingbirds from a rare breed himself, a certified hummingbird bander. So here in BC, we have four species of hummingbirds. I was really fortunate and I was able to borrow three of the four species from the UBC Museum. So here you go. My name is Roy Teo. I work for Metro Vancouver Regional Parks and I'm a park interpreter. Um, and I'm also one of 200 people in the world certified to ban hummingbirds. Looks like cottonwood, doesn't it? Tonight's program is uh, it's, it's about hummingbirds and it's a hummingbird banding program and it's one of the programs that we've assembled in a series called the Hands-On Scientist. And I'm going to pass around a replica of an egg. This is an opportunity for us to bring in scientists and researchers who are qualified at things that are very specialized and things we often don't see. And who would have thought that there's people that actually have to be certified to go and ban a hummingbird. We maintain a monitoring station out at Widgeon Marsh um, where we track the population, the abundance and the diversity of hummingbirds and that's been happening for five years now. All the work I do with um, banding and monitoring hummingbirds is out of passion and it's, uh, it's entirely volunteer. I've got it on, I'm just checking the fit. It rotates smoothly, that's good. It's estimated that overall, worldwide, um, there's about 6,500,000 rufous hummingbirds, so it's pretty healthy. But the concern right now is that there's been a steady decline of about 2.7% every year for the last 70 years or so. Banding hummingbirds allow scientists to track their population. On a recent July morning, 30 hummingbirds were banded, a normal number for this time of year. One of the reasons why hummingbirds are in decline is the loss of habitat. So anything you can do to enrich your backyards by planting native plants with flowers would help a hummingbird. Here in Metro Vancouver Regional Parks, we offer a whole range of programs that cater to the birder and the bird watcher. It was wonderful, all the information that we got on the birds. Uh, we certainly have our feeder out and take great pleasure in seeing them come and feed at our house. So uh, now I know a little more about it and just paying a little more attention to it. We had a picnic over yonder and then we came here. So it's been a complete evening. Bird watching is one of the number one recreational activities in North America. It gets people outside, they walk the trails, they get to enjoy nature in a passive way and just listen to the wondrous sounds we have around us. I love hummingbirds. When I lived somewhere else, we had one of those basic hummingbird feeders and we had hummingbirds all the time. I think that's when I first fell in love with them. I think they're so awesome. We've got a feeder just outside the kitchen window where I stand when I'm washing the dishes. It's right there and I can watch them from very close. They're gorgeous. They're fantastic flyers and really interesting birds. I'm, I'm absolutely amazed by hummingbirds. The greatest things, having one up, uh, up close and in my hand. Um, even now I'm amazed by how small they are. Welcome back to the sustainable region. You can't see them during the day, but at night the sky is just full of stars. And if you leave the city, you can see even more. Well, that's what several hundred people did recently when they watched meteors light up the night sky at Alder Grove Lake Regional Park. It is eight o'clock on a mid-August evening at Alder Grove Lake Regional Park. And it is not business as usual. This is the one night of the year when overnight camping is not only allowed, it's actually encouraged. It's an opportunity to see the park in a different light. And we close our parks, of course, when the sun sets. So it's rare that you can come into a park when it's very dark. 
it. So they're going to glow in the dark and What's be this bright favorite? orange color. It's really important to get a chance to just experience nature when the lights go out. It's our first time coming here, so we're really looking forward to it. And it's really great weather, so it looks like fun. Lots of, good, well, lots of people around, and uh, it should be really neat. We're already seeing our neighbors around here. Uh, we didn't know we were coming out, uh, so uh, it should be a fun night. We're from Burnaby, and there's kids here from their school. So, yeah, we just saw them out there, and now they're going to share tents and all sleep outside together. We haven't done it before, but I love it already. Later tonight, Mother Nature will put on a show. It's the annual Perseids meteor shower when minute particles of dust in space get close enough to the Earth to burn up in the atmosphere. They're very fleeting. They're tiny little specks of dust burning up in the atmosphere, so it's over very quickly. But it's so exciting to get that sparkle in the night and, of course, make a wish. It's like a mini nature lottery <laughs> to get to see them. And there's, there's hundreds of thousands of them, and it's just very, very beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Members of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada are on hand with their telescopes, hoping to spark interest in a hobby that's literally out of this world. We'd like to, you know, get as many people out to, have, to look through our scopes and, and share the night sky as we can. We want to share our equipment and, and an opportunity to see what they can see and hopefully get them encouraged to find out a little bit more about the night sky themselves. It's a long wait until the sky is truly dark. So in the meantime, there are activities to keep the kids entertained. Homemade star hats are the accessory of the moment. Unless, of course, you're offered the chance to wear a tiara. I need our hero. And you can't really be a hero without a sword. An audience participation play is a fun way to learn about the myth of Perseus, who lends his name to this annual celestial event. All right, show everyone your googly eyes. Wonderful! Okay. <laughs> As day turns to night, all eyes turn to the north sky. Yes, yeah, look at that. Yeah, see it right there? Yeah, it lasted a long time. It does not disappoint. By midnight, Aldergrove Bowl has turned into a tent city. It is the best attended all night stargazing event in years, with more than a thousand people enjoying the show. Don't like the dark? You can still see views that make you ooh and ah at Minicata Regional Park. Our park specialist Candace Ng takes us on a guided tour. Tired of the hustle and bustle of city life or overcrowded parks? Come relax at Minicata Regional Park in Coquitlam. Nestled between Burke Mountain and Pitt Lake, this park offers over 10 kilometers of quiet forest and marshland trails. Minicata's Marsh is a great spot for bird, beaver, and bat watching. For you hikers, there are spectacular viewpoints, like from the top of High Knoll. And if you want someone to show you around, our knowledgeable park interpreters will take your group on a hands-on tour of the park for as little as $70. How about a bit of history? There's the elegant Minicata Lodge. This swanky lodge was built by former Lieutenant Governor Eric Hamber in 1934 as a hunting retreat. While we don't allow hunting here anymore, you can rent the lodge for weddings or other occasions. Or you can come to an open house the first Sunday of every month from 1 to 4 p.m. Minicata's Art in the Park Festival happens every August. Music, art, family, fun, not to mention a barbecue. Minicata is located just 10 minutes off the Lougheed Highway in Coquitlam. So whether you're looking for a chance to see wildlife, a bit of history, a scenic picnic, or a peaceful hike to a great view, Minicata has something for everyone. 
For directions and more information, go to www.metrovancouver.org and search Regional Parks. Come to Return of the Salmon and win a spawning salmon return to Kanaka Creek Regional Park in Maple Ridge. Experience the sights and sounds of splashing chum amidst the golden fall colors. This free, all-ages event takes place on Sunday, October 17th. Need some fresh air? Then join us Sunday, October 24th for a guided fresh air hike in Langley's Derby Reach Regional Park. This scenic but moderate hike will take you along the Fraser River past cottonwoods, through farmland, and into mature coniferous forest. This event is for ages 13 and up. To find out more about costs and registration or check out what else is coming up, visit our website at www.metrovancouver.org. Welcome back to the Sustainable Region and our look at some of the unique offerings in Metro Vancouver's regional parks. Well, a lot of people don't realize that there are a couple of campgrounds in Metro's park system, each of them offering a very different camping experience. Welcome to Derby Reach, a Metro Vancouver regional park in Langley that offers camping. It's not well known and it's not well publicized and the people who use it would like it to stay that way. Well, I think it's almost ready, actually. We love watching the tugboats on the river in the mornings and sometimes in the evening, and it's just so nice, and it's, we just love it here. And we hope it stays like this for a long time. It's a pretty quiet crowd. If you want to come somewhere for a nice, quiet, relaxing camp, camping visit, this is the place to go. There's not a lot of noise or rowdies or anything like that. The quiet atmosphere and its small size make Derby Reach a very popular place. People will arrive sometimes before 6 o'clock before the gate is open. Some people will actually line up, especially when it's coming up to a long weekend or, or over the weekend. I was here uh, two mornings in a row, Thursday morning and Friday morning. Got in Friday morning. I was here at 5 after 6 and there was one person here ahead of me already because it's first come, first served. If you have to get here earlier, or you won't get a spot because you can't reserve. Sunday afternoons, lots of people check out, so Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays are the best days to come. Some hash browns on the plate. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, bon appetit. The campsites at Derby Reach are right on the Fraser River. I think it's wonderful. I think it's, yeah, it's peaceful, it's relaxing, it's, uh, the weather's been beautiful, people are nice. What more could you ask for? <laughs> Yeah, we come down here all the time. We just live here in Langley and uh, like where else can you get waterfront property for 19 bucks a night? At nearby Bray Island Regional Park, the rate for small campsites is almost twice as much, $37, and it goes up from there. But the campground could not be more different than its rustic counterpart across the river. Most of our sites are full hookup, so you have power, water, sewer, cable, and Wi-Fi. And then some of our sites are designed for smaller RVs or tents, and those sites have uh, power and water hookup. Here we have the swimming pool, we have access to the beach. So there's a day use area at the park too that anybody can access, and that includes a really nice sandy beach. There's a four kilometer walking trail. Uh, we have an on site store and cafe. Uh, you know, this is urban camping, so you, we don't want people to, you know, rough it too much so they can come into the store and grab an ice cream or uh, grab a burger and that sort of thing as well. Here as well, a lot of the campers are locals. Camping here at Fort Langley is a treat for us because it's about 15 minutes from our house. Careful, Todd, okay? It's actually, once you do that 15 minutes, you're like you've driven two or three hours. About 70% of our customer base is from the lower mainland. They probably don't drive more than about a half an hour to get here. Uh, we tend to get people that are newer to camping. They're using our site as a way to, you know, figure things out. I'm hooked, you know, it's 
so much fun. It's so relaxing. It's home away from home, and it's like a mini vacation. Uh, we like it because the kids have a lot of fun here. It's got the, the park and the pool. There's lots of, uh, you know, very smooth graveled roadway for the kids to ride their bikes on. And they, so far, they seem to have met uh, friends every, every weekend we've come here. So um, it's just been kind of a nice, nice getaway from the house for the weekend. Here at the fort, they have so much. They have a great little community across the bridge that you can stroll into and just get away for, a, you know, a gelato or something like that. <laughs> but, you know, there's different people at different stages of their life and their families are looking for different things. And, um, you know, people that come here are looking for one thing and people that go to Derby Reach or other parks are looking for something different as well and there's something to meet everybody's needs. So take your pick, rustic and peaceful, or with every modern convenience. The choice is yours. Welcome back. Metro Vancouver's regional parks offer programming for all ages, but don't be fooled into thinking that a hiking program for seniors is a walk in the park. Hundreds of thousands of people hike in Metro Vancouver's regional parks every year, but among that huge number, one group stands out. The Silver Sneakers Hiking Club is a group of seniors that hikes three to four hours every Wednesday in North Vancouver's Lynn Headwaters Regional Park. I'm like Mother Goose, and they are like my goslings. <laughs> I look after them, and they just follow. So where I go, they go. But it's not just about the Wednesday outing. The members of this group do other things beyond the scheduled hike. This past Monday, we went to Bunsen Lake. Uh, Monday last week, we did the Grouse Trail, the BCMC Trail, so we do other things, and I love it. It's great social networking, and uh, it's just a wonderful group of, of folks. It's open doors for me because um, I've now got into snowshoeing. Olga mentioned that she snowshoed, and I'd never done it before. Actually, Olga's taught me quite a bit. But here's what really sets this group apart. After Wednesday's hike is over, they don't go their separate ways. Enough, I've still I got enough strength left to do Stanley Park, you guys. Instead, they reconvene at a coffee shop near their entrance to Lynn Headwaters. This social gathering has become almost as important as the hike itself. Olga's group started out as a fitness group, and now they've gained uh, new friends and pretty much a family. <laughs> They meet for coffee after, and they go on trips together. They plan their vacations around the hikes. It's just a, a program that was started as a fitness program, but now has developed into a social networking system. <laughs> it's been such a nice group. We've everybody gets on very well, and uh, just very pleasant getting together and doing the hike and using up lots of energy, and then having a chat with the coffee. You feel. Sorry if you can't take part in it. You know, if you have to go off in a rush to an appointment or something, then you feel, hmm, I missed the coffee. <laughs> I like the people. They come from the four corners of the earth, and uh, we speak about all sorts of subjects. We um, share with each other. We learn from each other. It's uh, just wonderful, and it's wonderful to be in the outdoors. I like it very much because it's a, a kind of a nice social kind of gathering, and I certainly do think of them as my friends. It's not just friendship, it's more like a family. They're just very, very close. It's beautiful to watch. That's actually what I enjoy so much. It's re really, it is like a family. And the cost of joining this family? Just one dollar per hike. Now that's a true bargain. And here's another unique feature at one of Metro Vancouver's regional parks. Did you know that there's a community garden at Colony Farm? Well, there is, and visitors are always welcome, as they were earlier this year when the park hosted a big party, the Midsummer Fete. The community gardens at Colony Farm, where psychiatric patients once toiled to put food on their plates, today are just as likely to nurture flowers.
and those blooms are put to good use at this year's Midsummer Fete, produced by Public Dream Society in partnership with Metro Vancouver. This event, a Midsummer Fete, is a celebration of art, environment and organic gardening. So we like to think of it as a kind of soft activism, so using art and engagement through the arts um, as a way of introducing ideas around sustainability issues, eco-art and uh, sort of creating community around uh, a piece of land that has an extraordinary history. How's it going, Oscar? Is it working for you? And this being the site of a former farm, it's a good excuse to learn a bit about milk production. Wow! <laughs> Partnering with Metro Vancouver is really a wonderful thing. It's just about their commitment to community art and the effect that community art has in, in pushing the issues that they are as concerned about as we are. Midsummer Fet also features the creations of several local artists, as well as the opportunity for Fet goers to make some art of their own. This is my art! <laughs> Very nice. Colony Farm Regional Park, with its impressive community garden, already attracts close to 350,000 visitors a year. Metro Vancouver hopes even small events like this one will help that number grow. That's it for this episode. We hope you've enjoyed visiting some of the 21 parks in Metro Vancouver's regional park system. Let us know what you think or suggest some story ideas. You can phone us at 604-436-6794 or email us at sustainableregion at metrovancouver.org. For the Sustainable Region, I'm Dr. Timmer. Thanks for watching.